Last week on the show, we explored aquaculture, focusing on innovative fish farming techniques that allow you to raise fish right in your own backyard. We showcased how this approach brings sustainable food production closer to home, blending convenience with modern agriculture practices. So we have our system, as you can see the color of the water, mm. and you see that foam, which is formed. Yes. So this is what we call the bioflow technology. One of the key elements for these systems to work is constant aeration. We have to make sure that we measure the dissolved oxygen. from any piece of land, depending on your, on your interest. Total income is close to almost 150 million. The moment we, we utilize uh, maximally and optimally, uh, the literal resources we have, I'm telling you, I have not started uh, counting the profits, but in the next five years, I'll be worth between seven, 10 million dollars. Not shillings, but t between 10, uh, between 7 and 10 million dollars. Tonight, we journey to Mitoma district to revisit a farmer who appeared on our show a few years ago. Seven, to be precise. Since then, he has been transforming his approach to farming with purpose and determination. His story is one of innovation and resilience, and we believe it will leave a lasting impression on you. So let's get started. Welcome to another exciting episode of NTV Seeds of Gold. And tonight, we bring you a success story. What was a hobby is now an enterprise, a huge empire. Now you get to meet the brain behind this enterprise and tonight he will share with you give you a few tips here and there of anything and everything that you need to know to get into this position that he is tonight you get to meet the incredible dr bemoga you want to become an empire like him well stick around tonight and you'll learn so much more it's nice to have you on the show today. thank you stay tuned I'm Dr. Ben Mugasha. Mugasha. And uh, it means a lot. So whatever I do, or how I do it, it really has uh, that uh, ballistic uh, impact. You can't, you can't separate Ben Mugasha and Ben Mugasha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In this country, On this expansive, approximately 100 acre farm, Ben is taking a more strategic approach to farming. Though he may not have a large variety of ventures, each one is thoughtfully chosen. Today, we'll focus on his dairy farming operation, following up from when we last saw him growing pine. What led him to make the switch? Let's hear his story. I grew up from here. Starting this was not, is not, wasn't a really difficult thing. My father was typically, you know, uh, a farmer, mm. but at, uh, at that level, so, and we used not to agree because he believed in the quantity, mm -hmm. not quality. quality. And uh, so I just I said, okay, that's your... So now I realized, now my father is no longer here. So I said, what can I do different? Because I've traveled, I've been to Netherlands, I've been to... U.S. have been to where, been to even Kenya. Kenya here is very interesting. There is a lady in Kenya. She has ten cows, but she milks a day, one thousand liters. And what she did, she organically developed her, her breed. After facing losses and challenges with the available options on the market, Dr. Ben turned to artificial insemination. He explains that as a farmer, 
it is crucial to be cautious when selecting bit as you can sometimes end up with results that don't meet your expectations. This section of the farm is critical. It's where everything starts. If it's not well managed, there's no point in expecting profits. For example, I have brought now uh, six semens. If it is a holistic Frisian, if it is a uh, Frisian. So this one, this is just a, this one that just like a breeding center. Yeah. Much as, uh, okay, I get milk because uh, that one, when, when it, is, uh, it, 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 it is given birth, mm. I can get close to almost uh, 25 Little liters per day. Yes, per day. But my target is not that. I will develop them also organically until I get the type I want. So I now need to have another semen, okay? When they are, they are ready, then that's after that. Then another one. The, I think the, 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 the second, like the second, that's where I will say now I have the breed I need. It takes time. It, you have to be patient. Yes. It's not like uh, you go to the farm and I want to buy this, I want to buy this. It's okay, it's in me. So these are my cows. Mm. I am now developing organically. In the next, uh, I think, six, six years, yes. I think I have gotten what, uh, what, yeah, you really what want. exactly wanted. Okay. Yeah. Now, in, in, in terms of what you really want, are you looking at uh, milk production? Are you looking at uh, uh, meat production? Mine is, 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 is milk production. Milk production. So I definitely, this one, I, I set it like this, but it will be like a milking parlor. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll bring the machines, I set the machines, I, I, I put everything in order. Yes. But they are now, they, 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 they now milk just manually and uh, we get close like maybe 150, 200 liters depending. Okay. Yeah, per day, per day. So I realized you don't need many, you don't need many cows in order to, to make a, no. My target is uh, maybe 100. Cows. Because th why I need even a hundred is because of the the manure and 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 uh, and, uh, and everything. Mm. So all this that come goes from it goes into pits there. Yes. And uh, we becomes like uh, like um, like um, biogas. We just remove and then that's the one we use as manure. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. During our time on this farm, the team and I encountered something rather unusual. Bees and cows coexisting and feeding from the same source. It's suddenly intriguing and the farm doctor reassures us that this setup is safe with no harm typically caused. However, there are plans in place for the bees which we'll explore in more detail with time. But you see like these bees? Mm. These bees have nothing to do with, they can't sting you, they can't work because now they are looking for the, the uh, pollen. Yeah. Th these bees are many. Uh, is this a, a, a fresh patch of the silage? Good is now they have also to fight for their, for, for, <laughs> and I've told these guys to put some, some of these things there for the bees. Mm. Hey, how, yeah. how can we guarantee that the, the bees will go to the other? No, 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 this one they will not go. Mm. Because they are part of us, they've been here, but <laughs> but you know they produce also a lot. So every whatever it will be going down, yes. going down, going down. This is where the calves are raised, and I must admit, on this farm, it's done exceptionally well. The future here looks promising. How many calves do we have in here? Now? Yeah, I don't know the number, but now these are uh, that one. There is that one. There is that one. There is that one. So this is like now two months. Yes. Uh, that one, that one, and that one is one month. Yeah. There is also another one there. This one is the quality this I want. This is the one you want. Yeah, this is the one I want. Yeah, yeah. So now from here mm -hmm. they come this side. Girls, can you can you can you wake up? Can you wake up? From here you come this side. Huh? Mm. Hey, these ones, these ones you see they are, they are they, these are four months. Mm. Mm. These are four months. They are never. This is their, their, this is their movement. 
That's it. That's it. If, for example, we attempt to get them, when we are getting them out, yes. it's a war. Because they don't know how to walk. <sighs> so, and the logic behind this, I got this from, from, from Netherlands. You see, these, milk, uh, these milking cows, yes. uh, you know, it has to relax. It has to relax. Now, this one, you know, that's why when these, these calves are, are just born, they want to run, run, run. When they're running, they're stretching, you know, they're stretching now. It's like doing gym. Yeah. Okay? But now this one, all their knee is... is, is it is like also feeding them on, uh, on fresh, like that one. Yes. You know, because a cow, a cow's uh, size is dependent on the other stomach called rumen, rumen. Now, the moment it feeds on this, because it's, it's weight, a lot of insects and what have you, now it, it starts, they, they get this uh, diarrhea. Yeah. And it keeps on, it keeps on now, the, 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 the calf, you know, shrinks and things. So by the time it gets used and what have you, we're talking about maybe, maybe 16 months or so. Yeah. But these are, look at the stomachs, because everything they, 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 they feed on, it remains in there. In there. You just look at that, you might <laughs> think it's sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this one at 12 months, it should be ready for, 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 for a bull. Of course. Yes. It will be huge. It will be, it will be very, very huge. Yeah. And, 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 and no vitamins at all? No, no. We use the parrots also. We put yes. in the parrots. Yeah. That's why they, they, they see all these things. They first go look for parrots. Until they finish. Until it is finished, <laughs> then they, so they, they eat this. They eat the hay. Yeah, yeah. So now this, is, this one, the first product of my sex semen. Yeah. Yeah, so... Six semen. We are talking of Jesse, the Frisian, the the uh, the Holistin Frisian, etc. etc. Yeah. Now, if we close, if you close down here, now these ones are big girls. These ones are big. Now these ones are feeding on silage. Ah. Oh. Eh, you can see. Uh huh. Ah. can run around. So, and then they just come here for relaxation, for yeah, sunshine, for... Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Girls, girls. And they run back inside. Girls, girls. Yeah. Eh? So how old are these? These ones are about uh, seven, eight, eight months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be big girls. Yes. Yes, they're big. They eat. <laughs> they eat a lot. Now that's their water also. Yes. So you want to get your cows looking like that one? That one? As huge, as gigantic, as healthy? Well, stick around for the farming opportunities with Wukola Chemical Industries. Don't go away. Water, a very important aspect of farming. Well, good farming, so to speak. So Dr. Bemuga took time and dug up a well that provides up to 50,000 liters of water daily, pumped by hydroelectricity all the way back to the farm. But because we've got some issues with intermittent electricity supply, he has a backup plan. And what is that? Well, he's got the God-given sun. We are looking about 70,000 feet of well here. And then we have it running with the help of solar power energy. Isn't that awesome? Well, it is because wisdom will be the end of this man.
You might recall where the pine trees once stood. Today, Dr. Mugasha has strategically planted a large amount of animal grass. His deliberate approach is evident once again. With careful planning, he's setting himself up to achieve his goal. All that, all that, including the other one, everything. Okay, all that. Yeah. I do it in phases, phases, phases. Have, make sure that I have enough animal food, animal food. The sheer scope of this farm is unmistakable, and its organization reflects thoughtful planning for the long term. From the variety of grass species thriving here, it's clear that every detail has been carefully considered. With this level of ambition, the possibilities for the doctor are limitless. I removed this again in the garden. Now I'm replanting. I'm replanting, I think. And now, if you, you know this one, when, when, when is the rainy season? In, in two weeks. Ah! Ready yes, 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 yes. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> But this one you have uh, in an hour. Eh? Yes. In an hour, 10 times. Ah, yes. But it's helping, it helps a lot. Yeah. It gets the job done. Yeah, very you, well. and you know the quality of the stuff you get, the it's part, good. and yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this garden can, in, in like two hours, you don't see it. It's all done. It's all done. Then trucks are failing, to take, just taking them to taste the peas. So now these are these are silage peach. Because you manufacture your own silage. Yes, but my cows, these kia cows you can see, for example, the other one you have seen and the whatever, these cows are big. They're huge. They they eat, <laughs> they eat some, and when they don't have food. My God, they can even they can even just become just uh, wild. Wild. Eh? They become, become wild and uh, so I have to make sure that there is food, enough food for them. As long as I'm still on this farm, you are learning from the Kemo demonstration farm. Be intentional, be smart. We are looking at approximately 10 feet deep of silage storage. So it doesn't matter the season, these cows are sorted and they will be fed. We pile. Yeah. But you see this one, now it is permanent. Yes. Less, it is less costing because you can see the, the, the bricks. The bricks are just from the, that room where the, uh, the room soil stops. Mm -hmm. Down there is nothing. So why do we have the tarp on the side? Yeah, because it has to, to the, because of the moisture. Yeah. Yeah, the moisture, the moisture because you need to, to really recover to it well. It, yes. Yeah, to retain it. I see. Yeah. Simple, so, very so simple. more farmers should get into this. It's, yeah. It's, it's long term. Long term. It's, uh, this is like just a one off. Of course. Just one off. And you can have it forever? Yes. It's bigger, a lot bigger. So everything, all the animals here are super, super sorted. I'll be comfortable if I have all these three pits full. Then there, I know that now my hundred, uh, my hundred, uh, uh, you know, cows uh, are safe. Are good. To yeah, go. so I guess are good to go. Even if you have this silage to well kept, well whatever, but some of the nutrients are just escape here and there. Not you have it. So is. yes, so I, when you read them for like three or so hours, they just pick the, the natural, the natural whatever, and they come and supplement. It becomes it becomes real, 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 real important for for, for the them. growth of the for the growth of the, ah, the, of the animals. I think you've seen that foil, that yes. foil. So the heat now is this heat it's is just less. yeah yeah it's a bit less, it's a lot less. yeah it's a bit cooler less. For yeah them. cooler. Now for example in the evening when I come, that's when I can tell now they are okay or not because all these things are about passion. It's like the work you are doing yeah. and uh, if you say okay because uh, 
the other one has a farm, let me start a farm. And I start using, just uh, do the phone, phone call farm. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's something else. Nothing else. Because these cows, it's all about your total input in terms of love, in terms of responsibility, in terms of commitment, in terms of infrastructure you put uh, yeah. up for them, in terms of etc, etc. Then that's when you realize really the total output out mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, my target is when I hit 500 liters. Now I want to start packing my own products. Ah. Yes, this is now How about old? this is about about ten years. Mm. Mm. Ten years. At what about point do you say you know you've served your purpose to the cow? As long as the cow is well fed. Uh, is healthy, yeah. okay? It, 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 it has no problem. Because of the attachment, it is very difficult for me to throttle my cow. <laughs> Stop naming them. No, no, I, I prefer, I prefer when it is whatever. There are some, unless I have so much attachment, I bury them. You lie. Mm. So you're going to buy beef from outside because you're very attached to yeah. the cow. Mm. <laughs> really this is when you feel like you, know, you, you are eating your, <laughs> your friend. Uh, I've done it to two. Just you bury them. Just give them decent value. Because, you know, a cow has given everything. A cow has given. <laughs> why, why should you really? <laughs> but some of you, some of like It has eat. given you the gold. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. which one is your favorite? Is it Trish? It is Nina. Where is Nina? Nina, Nina, where is Nina? Nina, Rahi. Nina, 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 come, come, Nina, 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 <laughs> Nina, come, come. So this one, when it is, uh, it gives about 15 liters of milk. Per day? Yes. So do, you, but do you face any challenges when it comes to this, despite the passion and commitment? I do. Uh, mostly, we have a problem with, um, with the drugs. You see, when you, you, you buy these uh, adulterous drugs and then you spray your cows, mm. so now a tick doesn't die, it remains there, mm. so they become resistant. resistant. That, that, kind of, that kind of stuff. Now, I, to sort out of that, me in fact, which is it's very expensive, of course. Yeah. Uh, the spray race is very, very expensive. But there is no way a spray, uh, uh, when you are using a spray race, you can have a uh, tick resistant uh, problem. You have, because the cow comes and uh, there's no way. It can't escape. It can't escape. And now some farmers, because they are desperate, now they get the the pesticides for the for, for the, the plants. for the plants and, and whatever they mix this they mix the other one that's why most farmers have got cows uh, which are blind well doctor all we can do is hope what we learned today is be very intentional be compassionate have passion a lot of passion for your craft um, more on the insecticides, pesticides and whatever you need to use. We'll have it in the Farming Opportunities segment brought to you by Bukola Chemical Industries. Stay tuned. Tonight on Farming Opportunities.
these we saw earlier, for instance, feeding near the cows are part of a well thought out plan. They'll soon be moved to a dedicated area where their food and water are already set up, ensuring a very smooth transition. The sun is setting, so we've got to bid you adieu. But we are still on Kemu Demonstration Farm. Join us again next week because there is so much more to explore. Thank you so much. Keep those comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Missed an episode? Catch us on Tuesday when we give you a repeat. And if you want to watch us live and you're on the go, well, worry not. Just log into your TV and you'll catch us live. See you next week.